Hello everyone, good day to you wherever you are in the world and thank you for joining us. Welcome to this webinar on using video in ELT from Sensations English. I'm Adam, the ELT specialist at Sensations English and today we are delighted to welcome Cecilia Nobre who will be sharing her wisdom on how to design an effective video-based lesson plan. Just a reminder that if you are watching this webinar live, a CPD certificate will be sent to your email 24 hours after the webinar has finished. If you're watching the recording, please make your own note of your professional development activity. The webinar will last an hour and will include time for questions at the end of Cecilia's talk. Please write your questions in the Q&A box. The Q&A button appears when you move your mouse to the bottom of the Zoom window. If someone has already written the same question, you can click the thumbs up button next to that question to move it higher up the list rather than writing it again. And if you need any help during the webinar, please contact me in the chat box. So Sensations English is focused on helping teachers develop their skills and we're delighted to be hosting our first webinar series using video in ELT, which we hope that this will help you to expand how you use video with your classes. We're delighted to offer teachers hundreds of video resources, all graded at five levels and all with ready-made learning activities, making video accessible to all learners and hassle-free for teachers. Every week, we create three fresh five-level resources to give you the most up-to-date content to use with all your learners. Our Sensations English Teachers Edition includes logins for all your students and a digital teacher gradebook which lets you organize your students into classes, set tasks and monitor them live and review your learners' progress over time. To celebrate our webinar series, we're offering you a 50% discount on the Sensations English Teachers Edition if you sign up during May and access to a special three-week CPD program starting on Monday the 31st of May. To get this great offer, just go to the link on screen and in the chat to sign up. Now, to tell you a little bit more about today's speaker, Cecilia is a teacher, teacher trainer and mentor with over 20 years of ELT experience. Passionate about online teaching, teacher development, technology and education, materials development and CPD, Cecilia is a former Hornby scholar and has taught in Brazil, the UK and Turkey. She is currently teaching EAP at Özyen University in Istanbul and is the ELT ambassador at freed.com. Cecilia, once again, thanks very much for being here. Over to you. Thanks so much, Adam. Thanks for inviting me. Hello, everyone. Hi from Turkey, sunny Turkey, uh, Istanbul. So I hope you uh, enjoy the webinar today. Let me uh, share my screen with you. Okay, so we are going to uh, recap some of the ideas from Vicky's wonderful webinar last week. If you attended, we're going to uh, just talk about them very quickly. And then you'll be uh, presented to three types of lesson frameworks. One focused on integrated skills, the other one focused on vocabulary, and the last one, a grammar lesson. And we're going to share some ideas and uh, some specific lesson plans for for each of them. So I hope you enjoy the webinar and I hope you find them uh, the, the ideas useful. Okay, so this is from Vicky's webinar, okay, last week. Vicky presented some uh, functions, some ideas for video use, why they are, why video is so powerful, okay, because it assists cognition, it really broadens the uh, students' cognitive skills, it also raises their motivations and feelings because they can connect with the topic. If you carefully choose the video, they can connect with the topic. Uh, it also provides the cultural, different cultural experience to your students because the videos are from uh, all over the world. They expose students to different cultures and it also uh, demonstrates uh, different skills, for example, uh, turn-taking skills, um, the ability to use uh, connected speech, for example, just to name a few. Okay, and uh, Vicky also mentioned the three stages in video use, right? The previewing, 
so we can do some activities and activate students schemata and raise their curiosity in the pre-viewing uh, stage uh, while viewing they can actually engage with the with the video while they are watching the video and also post viewing activities i'm going to show you uh, different activities for those three uh, stages. So let's get started. Something very important when you're planning a video-based lesson is to think about the expected outcome, so the desired outcome, okay? And, and to help you with, with that, uh, I have an idea here, okay? So you can write something like that. By the end of the lesson, my student will have blah, 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 achieved something. What do you want your students to achieve by the end of the lesson, okay? And to help you write, to help you think about these, this outcome, you can use, sorry, you can use uh, Bloom's um, verbs, Bloom's taxonomy verbs, which categorize different verbs according to their higher order thinking skills and their lower order thinking skills. So, um, and you will see, you will get the slides later on. So don't worry, okay? You don't have to memorize all these verbs, but uh, they can really help you um, identify the needs of your students. Okay, you're ready for the first video? I want to ask you, who likes dogs? Who loves dogs? So can you share in the chat box? I had to choose a video with dogs. I had to, <laughs> I have two dogs myself. So you can see one of, the, one of my dogs there. Yeah, okay, so you will love this video. So this video is called Puppy Love in the Time of COVID. So we couldn't find a more timely video, right? And I'm going to show you the video in a moment. Okay, so just some information of the video first. So this is a video for C1, okay, a C1 student. So uh, they are advanced. And uh, in, in my case, okay, the expected, so it's a sample lesson. Uh, the expected outcomes are, at the end of the lesson, students will have discussed the implications of adopting a stray dog during a pandemic. And I also want um, a written, a written objective, okay? So they will have written, uh, will have given written advice to their best friend. So we are going to imagine the situation. And this is going to be an integrated skills lesson. So I'm going to integrate speaking, listening and writing in one lesson. So let me show you the video. You will love this video. Okay. So just to remind you that uh, in the website, you can have the option to, uh, to have the video with the subtitles on or off, okay? Uh, I'm just choosing subtitles off. So, uh, so an idea to introduce the topic in the pre-viewing stage, okay, so, uh, is to, uh, capture a screenshot of the video. Okay, and decided, I decided to capture this scene. Uh, you can edit, there are different uh, softwares or just, uh, I used a, a very basic one where I can blur the outside and change the color. And you can ask open-ended questions to really um, um, raise students' interest to the topic. Okay, they might have dogs or not, or, or pets at home. So this would be really nice to um, attract their attention. So this is what I, what I did in the pre-viewing stage. Another uh, possible activity for the pre-viewing stage is to, uh, as, to ask open-ended questions, okay? To encourage them to share their own experience. You can talk about uh, if they uh, would adopt a stray dog or not, okay? So I shared some ideas here. You're going to get the slides later on, don't worry, okay? But one example is this one, right? How do you feel? How do people feel during the COVID-19 pandemic? How do you feel? So I'm encouraging them to give their opinions on, on the topic and to talk about their own lives. So this can really build this rapport with the students. Okay, and then in the next stage, the while viewing stage, you can play the video, 
okay? Now you're going to play for the first time. And the idea is to get a, a gist of the video, of the, um, of the information from the video. So, sorry. And you can have, so the idea here is to have some flashcards. You can use um, slides, Google Slides, or a Quizlet to display the cards or just a simple whiteboard. And while they watch the video, they have to notice. So this is a great activity for noticing um, phrases or chunks of language, okay? Uh, about stray dogs to, uh, to fight loneliness during a pandemic. So they have to listen to these uh, phrases. Some of the phrases are not mentioned in the video, some are, okay? And, um, and another while viewing activity is uh, now, now the idea is for them to watch the video um, uh, again and listen, uh, listen to details, okay? And you can use sensations, English, comprehension questions. They are great, they're great questions. Always five questions, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, they, can, they can have a go at the questions while they view the video. And you can also uh, work on pronunciation to practice decoding. And there's a lovely exercise on Sensations English, which is an exercise called, what word, what's the word you hear? And uh, it's, it's really good for uh, decoding, for decoding skills. And then I'm going to integrate everything to the writing skills. As I said, remember, it's a, a, an integrated skills uh, lesson. So the writing, this is just an idea, okay, everyone. Um, you can come up with this situation, this hypothetical situation. Your friend is considering adopting a dog based on the, 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 the video that you've watched. Give some sound advice to your friend, okay? And then you can uh, tell them, okay, you can uh, think about writing an email to your friend or just a WhatsApp message. Um, but think about the the pros and the cons of adopting a stray dog based on the video you watched. So I think this would really um, help students and, and uh, giving this activity towards the end of the lesson uh, will really give students this, this knowledge and this information that they need to really express themselves. So, and remember they are C1, B2, C1 students and they should be able to write some interesting um, pieces of advice, okay? And when uh, to, to uh, finish this, this activity, you can, again, work on the productive skills as a, as a post-viewing, uh, in the post-viewing stage, you can have a whole group uh, feedback where students can, um, can give peer feedback to each other Okay, and they can support and while they support each other, you can monitor and assist students as uh, as they go with emergent language, for example, or questions related to vocabulary. So uh, it's a great way of bringing all the class together and um, give this overall feedback to them. Okay, so this is a wrap up, okay, of uh, the um, the lesson. So you will have this, uh, this is a little summary of the stages, okay? And remember, it's an integrated skill lesson. And I have a question for you. Okay, I have two questions. Can you please choose one of the question and one of the questions and answer in the chat box? Which activities would you do to introduce the topic in the pre-viewing stage, okay? Uh, or you can choose the second one. How would you adapt this lesson, uh, lesson framework to fast finishers? I'm going to have a look. So share your ideas in the chat box. Okay, Josh, fast finisher. Uh, Uma is saying mock interview role play. Oh, that's very interesting, Uma. Uh huh. But for that, you would have to have at least two students, two fast finishers. Yeah, they could uh, 
uh, you, they could mock this interview. One could be the uh, the adopter, and the other would be the, the the person in the shelter, right? Who works in the shelter? That's a very good idea. Uh huh. Uh, fast finisher would be used to assist the others. Yes, why not? Yeah, that's a good that's a good idea as well. I missed who wrote that. Sorry. Um, Okay, and Lynn is saying to introduce the topic, show some pictures of the video to students and guess what's going to be. Yes, you guessed. That's a great uh, idea, Lynn. And we're going to have this activity in the uh, in one of the, the next videos. Okay, great. Great. Ask more open ended questions. Right? Yes. Okay, uh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel said something. Did I miss it? Fast, okay. Fast finishers create a list of questions a Keno could ask potential. Wow, I love that, Daniel. That's a very, very interesting uh, idea that a Keno could ask potential dog owners. Yes, to see how responsible uh, and and serious they are. Right. Yes, and they uh, and perhaps at, uh, uh, they can also mock this this interview. Right with uh, potential dog owners. Wonderful, thanks so much, Daniel. Thanks everyone for your ideas. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the next one. Are you ready? The next video uh, is office left empty as New Yorkers work from home. It happens, it happens in New York, but I'm sure that uh, this is a similar situation in many, many cities, right? Uh, so I'm going to show you the video, but before, let's have a look at some information from the video. So this video is designed to A1 student, not the video, I'm sorry, the, the video I, I chose because you can choose the same video and you can use with different students from A2 to C1, okay? There are different uh, narrations, but the video is the same. Um, but I, des I decided to choose A2 because apparently mm, some teachers don't believe that beginner students can work with authentic videos. And I'm going to show you that they can, okay? From A1, they can work with authentic videos, yes. So we should not deprive them from this, this thrill. Uh, so the, oh, I'm sorry, going back. So the idea is, um, it's a vocabulary lesson, okay? And by the end, by the end of the lesson, students will have described and demonstrated their vocabulary knowledge, and then practice vocabulary related to the video. So uh, I just want to uh, to highlight that this is only one uh, one one part of the lesson, okay? Of course, if you want to work on vocabulary and then speaking within the same video, you can. Okay, so this uh, is just an idea on how to use, how to work on vocabulary. Okay, so uh, let me show you the video, by the way. Wonderful, I'm going to play the video for you. Okay. The streets of New York City are normally full of people, but now they are almost empty. The pandemic has made New York into a very different place. Just one second. Do you see how different it is, the, this narration to the first one? Do you see how uh, the, the, the narrator speaks more slowly and the, the language is easier for A1 students, right? I just want to highlight this. Most offices are closed because their workers can't come to the city. They have to work from home. Lots of shops and restaurants are also closed. Luke Camperman works in New York for Welthun Plus. He only uses their office one day a week. He thinks people will go to offices less. This will affect cities. Uh, but I do think that we will see uh, a different type of uh, vibe and that people are only coming in 
two or three days a week and not five days a week. So it will have a massive impact on everything that's built around these offices and having all, you know, all these uh, uh, people um, going to shops and cafes, uh, etc. Lots of office workers enjoy working from home. They find it more convenient. Experts think offices should change into places where people feel supported. They should be specially designed to be more creative places. Younger workers and workers who live near their... All right, okay, so you, you got the hang of it, right? So share your ideas in the chat box. Did you like the video, the, the, the beginning? Yeah? Uh, Elena is saying the pace, pronunciation, and language are different. Yes, yes, they are, Elena. Uh huh. If they are adults, yes, we are focusing on adults. Pel Pelin, yes. I'm sorry if, you, if I mispronounced your name. Uh, looks cool. Yeah, interesting. Okay, wonderful. So, um, in the previewing stage, I would suggest these questions. Okay, again, to encourage their participation, to see if they are interested in the topic. Um, they might be experiencing this right now, right? You can, uh, so you can ask them to share their, their experience uh, of working from home or going to work. Do they have to commute or not? How do they feel about it? Okay. Um, so yeah, try to ask um, open-ended questions or questions where they would share their opinion. Okay. so. Then as this is a vocabulary lesson, we're going to work on the vocabulary, right? So in the previewing stage, again, uh, you can elicit what they already know because they always know something, right? They, they, they always know something uh, by brainstorming their existing vocabulary. So you can use a mind map. Uh, you can use, if you're teaching online, you can use different apps and websites, for example, uh, Miro, Miro, do you know Miro? If I'm, I'm right, if can, if someone um, can write in the chat box, Miro is one. Or you can use um, uh, Zooms, Zooms uh, whiteboard as well. Or if you have a physical whiteboard, right, a mini whiteboard, you can you can you can uh, brainstorm on the whiteboard. Why not, right? So. Uh, there are different ways of uh, using mind map and you can elicit what they um, they already know about working from home uh, and by answering the questions you can write down some chunks uh, some collocations as well okay and then you can play the video for the first time and uh, ask them to notice the vocabulary from the previewing stage, the, the, the mind map. So they can, they can uh, try to recognize or identify the, the words, the, the phrases, the le lexical chunks that they shared before. Sorry for that. And uh, if, they, if they come across a new uh, phrase, a new word or a new collocation maybe, they can add to their um, mind map and you can add as well. So this, this, this is the while viewing phase. Uh, and then another way of working with vocabulary is presenting the, the, the new vocabulary when, while, sorry, while they are watching the video, as they watch the video, okay? So uh, what you can do is to use this you would use the tape script. All the videos are accompanied by a tape script, okay? So you can find on the website, on Sensations English website. So you can uh, take the tape script and passages uh, and write on, uh, again, flashcards and ask learners to discuss the keywords. What are the keywords in in, in each passage, okay? They can highlight or they can work in pairs, okay? In this case, uh, it would be great to have pair works uh, and then they can work together as a pair. So for example, this one, for instance, which chunks or which words do you think are um, key vocabulary for them? Let's, let's focus on vocabulary, okay? Not grammar, so. 
from pair one, for example, the streets of New York City are normally full of people. I would say, yeah, empty. Uh huh. And what about full of people? We have this chunk, right? Full of people, not just full, but full of something. So you can present this full of people, right? Full of people. Yes, Ana Paula. Um, what else? Another chunk work from home. Yeah, work from home. Okay. Yes, uh, closed. Yes, closed, empty. We have the antonyms closed, empty. Yes. Uh huh. And uh, the second one lots of office workers enjoy working from home. Which key vocabulary do you think um, is important for students, for A2 students, beginner students to, to learn from the second, second passage? Can you share in the chat box? The second one. Lots of office workers enjoy working from home. Creative, yes, I share, yes, the enjoy and ing, right? Enjoy working, uh huh. Yes. What about this one? Find something adjective, right? Find something, find it more convenient, for example. Yeah should infinitive wonderful but should infinitive is more it goes towards grammar but but okay yes um what about specially designed there's an interesting collocation yes yeah? specially plus adjective right specially designed yes okay great so you can highlight these chunks these uh vocabulary items to your students and they can work together with their friends all right, and then they're going to watch the video again, but this time for details, okay? And um, now that they have been exposed to the, this new vocabulary, they're going to, uh, and you explain, right? Um, they can try to notice, try to encourage your students to notice unusual words or phrases, okay? And then you can collect, you can take notes and collect for the, the plenary for the uh, whole class feedback. All right, did I, did I miss anything? Yes, okay, I didn't. All right, and then the post viewing, and somebody, somebody suggested that, right? Uh, the post viewing activity could be, they would practice their vocabulary in pairs, okay? And based on the screenshots, you can take screenshots of different moments in the video, right? and they can discuss the news based on the images right so what was happening here the um, the, the 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 streets here for example the streets in new york were empty um people are working from home for example okay and you can uh, you, you should also assist your students okay so this is a nice activity they have to recall what happened in the video and another post viewing um, activity for them to practice the target vocabulary is to let them choose uh, uh, a game from Sensations English website because there are uh, lots of interesting games there. Um, and you can, you can ask them to choose, okay, two, one or two games from the website. And they can do it individually or with their partners. And then the speaking task where they are going to use, hopefully, <laughs> we can only hope, right? We can, they're going to use the, the vocabulary, the collocations, the chunks that they have discussed before, right? So you can ask them to report to their uh, peers uh, what happened in the news uh, and they have to recycle and, and, and uh, recall the vocabulary. So that's a nice, um, practice activity for them. And then towards the end, again, as a post in the post viewing stage, you can have a whole group feedback where you can select some uh, vocabulary errors. If, for example, they are working in breakout rooms, when they're working in pairs online, uh, you can visit 
the different breakout rooms and take notes of any um, any mistakes or uh, also good language, right? We should praise our students. So good, lang good language that they use, if you see that they can remember uh, some of the uh, vocabulary that, uh, that was presented, you can also share that with uh, the whole class. Okay, so that's the idea for a vocabulary lesson. Uh, and here, this, this is the wrap up, okay, a little summary of this framework. Okay, so we have a lead in, brainstorming, uh, what they already know, the games. And I have again two questions for you. Let's let's talk about the different ways that we can adapt that. All right. So you can choose one of these questions to answer or both if you want. Okay. How would you present new video vocabulary to students? Or you can talk about how would you add or delete, sorry, would you add or delete any stage proposed? because this is only a suggestion. Okay, guys, I think it's a great suggestion, but it's a suggestion. So would you, I'm going back to the uh, framework. Would you add or delete anything there? Or maybe change the order of the, uh, the stages perhaps. So let me see some of the ideas. Uh, Okay, just a second. Uh, Mohammed said post viewing stage, I usually end up with a student presenting the video for a minute. So the student could, uh, you mean summarize the video, right? Because we're not asking them to memorize the video, right? But, but um, reporting back. Yes, that's a, that's a good idea, Mohammed. Um, let me see. Uh, Okay, Julian is saying you can introduce passive form as a lexical item at this level. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the introduction maybe play hangman. I personally don't like this 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 game. I don't think it's very suitable. I don't I don't like it, but it, it's up to you, <laughs> Ana Paula. Okay. Uh, but maybe instead of a hangman, like flowers. <laughs> All right. Uh, Michelle saying, I love the mind map idea to brainstorm and pre-teach vocab. Right. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, there are different um, ways you can, you can brainstorm. It's just one idea. Thank you. Um, let me see. Elborg, sorry if I'm mispronouncing. I would definitely personalize the topic with students afterwards. Everyone has something to say. Yes, yes, definitely, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Lama said, summarizing the video in a storyboard. Yes, that's a great idea. Uh, you can use uh, Padlet, perhaps. Uh, do you have, uh, do you want to suggest Lama or, or another participant, storyboards um, websites, for instance? I know Padlet. Jumboard as well, right? You can use Google Jumboard. Drawing, Nelton says. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your lovely ideas, everyone. Wonderful, wonderful. Now I'm going to show you the last video. This is one of my favorite. I have to say it's one of my favorite uh, lessons. I've, I've uh, presented this lesson to three private students and they loved it. So it's Thai Plane Cafe Takeoff, okay? It's a really interesting uh, video. So, but before I show you the video, uh, we're working uh, in this case with B1 students, so intermediate students. And again, I'm using that kind of uh, framework, right? By the end of the lesson, students will have identified uses of present perfect. Oh, by the way, we are working on grammar for this lesson, all right? So uh, I selected one uh, grammatical structure, which is the present perfect, to describe recent events. And you will see how the present perfect is used in this video, okay? Pay attention to, oops, pay attention to it. Uh, 
And also students will have used the present perfect to talk about recent events in their lives because we always want students to connect with the topic and, and with the, the grammatical structure that they are using, right? It shouldn't be something isolated. So, um, and another grammatical, maybe another grammatical structure that you could uh, focus on is defining and non-defining relative clauses. But for, um, for this lesson, we're going to work on the present perfect only, okay? Otherwise the lesson would be way too long. All right, let me show you the video. Okay. The pandemic has upset the travel plans of millions around the world. However, plain cafes have taken off in Thailand to give locals the feel of a holiday trip. A retired aeroplane has become a plain cafe in the coastal city of Pattaya. Passengers boarding passes are scanned upon entry. Customers can sip a relaxing coffee on comfy first-class seats. Passengers fake holiday selfies with the cafe's carry-on luggage. Some even take a turn in the pilot's place. Another plain cafe at Thai Airways head office is perfect for hungry travelers who miss airline food. You can dine on spaghetti carbonara and Thai-style beef which cabin crew deliver on plastic in-flight trays. Thailand was the first country outside China to close its borders. It's had a very low infection rate and fewer deaths from COVID-19. The government is now considering travel bubbles with countries which also have low disease rates. In the meantime, welcome on board the Plain Cafe. Okay, how did you like the video? Did you enjoy it? All right, uh, so remember, we are going to focus on grammar for this video, okay? So it's a grammar lesson. Uh, in the lead-in, the previewing stage, so by uh, you're not going to show the video um, uh, at, in this moment. So you're going to encourage students' participation. Uh, and these are just some ideas of questions you can ask them. Right? Do you like going to cafes? Which ones? I love going to cafes. Which ones, uh, which cafes uh, are in their city? Which, is there any nice cafe in their city? So ask them personal questions. Non-threatening, by the way, right? So when was the last time you flew? Where did you go? And the last time I flew was, wow, two years ago. Yeah, and you can share. You can also share your your uh, experience as well. So, uh, all right. And then another idea that you can um, propose your students to set up, to set the context. Sorry, is uh, to play the first fifteen or or you know 10, 15 seconds of the videos with sounds and subtitles off. So they can have just a slight idea of what's going on and they have to predict and, and, and yeah, and guess what's happening. Okay, I did that with my student and she was really confused. Like, oh, they're going to, like, to the, they're going to fly that she couldn't uh, um, understand that there is a, a, a cafe inside a plane. So uh, it's really interesting. Get, get, uh, it gets them thinking, you know. Um, or if you don't want, you can display again five or six screenshots from the video and ask them what they think it's going on, uh, where are the people, uh, what are they doing. So this is a nice way to uh, to, uh, to to engage them with the with the topic. All right, so the grammar for, from the video is uh, going to be dealt uh, in a guided discovery approach, okay? So uh, what you can do is to, again, you're going to use the tape script and select one passage where the target grammar uh, is displayed. So as we're going to work on the present perfect to describe recent events, I selected this passage, okay? a retired airplane, blah, 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 present perfect. So you give, you uh, fill with uh, um, a gap. 
in the coastal city of Pattaya, passengers, bo uh, passengers boarding passes are scanned upon in entry. Okay, so do you remember? <laughs> I know it's hard. Do you remember what they said here? I know it's hard, just a, a challenge. Who remembers? And remember, you can play this uh, with or without the uh, subtitles, okay? Almost, Jillian, almost that. Mm, it was, has become, okay? The right answer is, has become, all right? Okay, it's, uh, yeah, has become. So, you can, uh, and then you, you play the video, Okay, now you play the video it, uh, at that exact moment when the narrator says this passage and see if your student can grasp what the narrator said, okay, which is has become. And then we're going to work on language analysis through concept checking questions, CCQ questions, okay, to really con uh, contextualize the target grammar. So you can ask some of these questions, for example, uh, is the plane working now? With simple, okay, plain, plain English, okay? Was the plane working before? So try to ask yes or no questions to really see if they understood uh, this, this passage, this has become, all right? Um, is the plane too old to be active? Yeah, yes. So. These are some of the CCQ questions you can ask. And you can also use timelines or drawings, okay? If you think they are easier. Uh, and then the uh, another activity for the while viewing stage is a control practice activity where they will uh, be encouraged to notice language. Okay, so you're going to play the video again with subtitles on. If you think the uh, students are struggling, I would play with the subtitles on uh, first, okay? And ask students to notice and report more examples because there are two more examples of, um, of passages with, uh, with the target grammar, okay? And in pairs, they can discuss the meanings of each chunk uh, in pairs or in groups, okay? Oops. Another control practice activity is going back to Sensations English website and ask them to choose two or one game. Okay, I like the um, choose the verb, choose the verb game. It's really, um, it's a really interesting one. For example, here, they have to use the present perfect. Yeah, the pandemic has blah, blah, blah the travel plans of millions around the world. Okay, do you remember? What's the answer here? Let's see if you remember. What's the answer? Upset, yes, yeah. And maybe you can uh, highlight this upset because they might, they might, uh, uh, they might recognize upset as, a, as an adjective only. And you can say, no, upset is also a verb. And you can talk about if it's regular, um, regular or irregular. So you can work on that. Uh, my, my dog, my dog is awake now. Okay, so, all right, that's another idea. And another uh, idea for uh, post viewing, for the post viewing stage, which can be done uh, asynchronously as well, okay, is for students to look for strange news story news story uh, in their L1 or from their country, okay? Especially showing recent events. Um, and they have to share and explain the story to, to their partners. So it's a pair, it's a, it's a pair work or group work, okay? And if you choose to do this, uh, to assign this uh, to a synchronous work, they can write a summary, record an audio or video using the target grammar. I like Vocaroo, you know Vocaroo? Can somebody type Vocaroo? It's a great uh, website for uh, audio recording. I've done that with my students and it's really, really simple. So, um, 
okay, if you want to, if you want your students to do this asynchronously. Vocaro, yeah, it's great, isn't it? And if you want your students to record a video, perhaps you can use um, a Flipgrid, yeah, Flipgrid or Loom as well. Voice Spice, oh yeah, I've, I've, I, I know this one. I've heard of this one as well, Zainab, wonderful. All right, uh, and then again, the plenary where you're going to have a whole group feedback. You're going to uh, encourage your students to share their news, the news that they've discussed in pairs, remember, uh, with the whole class, trying to use, uh, you, you, well, we hope, we hope they, they can use some, um, some, target, some target language, some, sorry, some target grammar, right? Um, and while they are speaking, you can take notes and then give uh, feedback to your students and ask them to give to give each other feedback as well. So uh, and another idea is for you to assign some some roles, some some uh, jobs to the students who listen. You you can ask them to make questions. Okay, about the piece of news. So asking the students, um, so they are not only listening passively, they have to really listen and, and ask follow-up questions. So they are listening for a purpose, right? Not, not just listen for the sake of it. They have to, we have to, to think about the purpose. All right, and then um, as a follow-up, you can give, as I said before, a whole class, uh, we can give some, some whole class feedback, uh, focusing on the um, error correction because it's grammar, remember? So they may, um, they may use um, the, the auxiliary verb, have or has, they may not know how to use perhaps, or you may help them with irregular verbs right, when using the present uh, perfect. So you can uh, give feedback. And again, you can use a whiteboard, you can use Miro uh, or Zoom whiteboard or a physical whiteboard, okay? All right, and this is a little summary of our lesson, the grammar lesson, okay? You will have the slides later on, don't worry. Okay, so I would like to uh, ask you, okay, again, choose one of the questions to, uh, to answer, or both. <laughs> in what ways, in what other ways could students produce controlled practice of the target grammar? Okay. How would you adapt this lesson framework to your groups? Because each student is different. Okay, you may have a stronger group, you may have a little bit weaker group. How would you adapt? I'd love to hear your ideas. Uh, Meltem said by giving reading exercises. Um, what kind of reading exercises, Meltem? Uh, the, the, dean, the dean, I'd like to develop a flip lesson, yes. This will be with Sophia. Sophia will talk about, I think Sophia is here, right? Uh, she'll talk about uh, flip lesson, uh, asynchronous lessons next week. You can't miss it, okay? Today we're, we're focusing on synchronous lesson. Listening exercises, okay. Uh, Pre-assignment, oh, using word cards. That's interesting, Zoila. What kind of word cards, like flashcards? Are you talking about flashcards? Okay, the, Josh is saying they talk about how something has changed in their, their city. That's great. Yeah, they can share that, Josh, uh -huh. since the pandemic. Yeah, I'm sure they will have lots to say, <laughs> lots to say. Yeah. Daniel, provide a sentence for them to finish. That's great, Daniel. So you're, you're prompting them, right? This week I have blah, 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 but I have, I love that. I love that. So you, you, you give the, the, the structure and they only have to uh, come up with the verb. That's, that's great. Uh -huh. This week I have 
been to the supermarket, but I haven't, um, I haven't spoken to my family yet, maybe, right? And how would you adapt this lesson to your groups? Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. How would you adapt this lesson to your groups, everyone? Describe a photo, Fatima. Mm. Um, I'll, Abinaya, Abinaya. Detective games work well with which I have experience in my classroom. Mm, what kind of detective games? Can you explain? I, I don't think I uh, understand exactly what you mean by detective games. It sounds great. It sounds interesting. <laughs> Uh, okay, what have you done? All right, wonderful. So we've talked, so we're going, um, we're almost finishing yeah, the, the, the webinar. So we talked about the benefits of using videos in synchronous lessons, okay? Don't worry, you will have, um, uh, Sophia will talk about uh, different ways you can use videos in asynchronous lessons, don't miss it, okay, next week. So we talk about the stages, the different stages, the procedures and reasons of using video in three different frameworks. Remember, integrated skills, the grammar, a grammar a lesson and a vocabulary lesson. And you also share some great ways to adapt your lesson to, um, adapt the lessons to your students. So, uh, Adam, do we have time for questions? Are you there? Yes, we certainly do. Yeah. So, um, I've got some great questions here. Um, uh, there's there's one that I just want to answer straight away, which lots of people have asked, which is about the, the um, three-week CPD program. So, if okay. you don't mind, I'll just do that first. Of course. Um, so, just for the people who are interested. Um, do you the, want to share your screen? Um, uh, Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, why don't I do that? That's yeah. a good idea. Okay. <laughs> so, um... Thank you, everyone. If you have questions uh, later so on. So the, um, the CPD program is, um, uses a reflective practice approach and focuses on developing video and digital teaching practice. It includes small daily tasks and encourages teachers to share their experiences doing these tasks and their perspectives on those experiences and learning through that sharing process. Each day builds on the last day, so it starts with a solid basis and a, a, a steady, a, a good foundation um, before moving on to more advanced concepts. And to help with that, there's also a live induction session on Zoom and also a live midway development session on Zoom, which is designed to help people explore their experiences on the program with others and learn from each other's perspectives. Um, all of this uses Sensations English as a basis for that, so everyone's got a common ground to work on, um, uh, but then of course is um, applicable much more widely in your digital and video teaching. So that's all I want to say about that. Um, uh, if you're interested in it, I'll pop some links in the chat again for that. Um, but now the first question I've got for you, um, Cecilia, is <clears throat> can you explain how to do peer correction and provide assistance to students in a group class on Zoom. Right. I understand how to do it in person, but it's yeah. harder on a video call. Yeah, I yes, I, I understand, yes. Uh, in uh, when I teach my my groups, um, we have you have to assign them. There's one idea is to assign them into breakout rooms. And uh, it's, it's very helpful if you have um, some checklists, you know, the, some successful criteria sort of thing or checklist where they can really um, understand what they should be doing or what they can expect um, from, from, the, from their partners to, to, to talk about. And they can follow the checklist because if you, if you don't provide them with, with anything, just, the, they may not know how to how to do it, right? So, um, so uh, you have to create this checklist of good language use. For example, uh, can my, um, for example, one of the questions, right? Uh, did my partner use at least one 
target grammar um, structure, right? So they can tick or not. Um, another way of uh, helping them is to, you know, you just use the chat box and give feedback uh, via the chat box and ask them to take notes as well. So I think if you, and also if you model before, before asking them to do some peer feedback, you should model what you, uh, you expect from them. So uh, they, they know, and over time, maybe the first time they do peer feedback, it won't, uh, it won't be great. But if you, um, if you have this routine, okay, if you repeat this, this activity uh, in different moments, they will get used to it, okay? So that's, that's my idea. Do you have Thank another you. question? Yes, absolutely. The second one is um, uh, using the framework, lesson plan framework you suggested, how can we use mother tongue as a resource? Is it good to use L1 at the pre-viewing stage? I think it's, it's a great, uh, it's a great asset for, for, for us and for them uh, because if, um, especially if there are students who who share the same uh, l1 right they can uh if they are struggling with with the language they can communicate in l1 um and you can um you can help them uh, as well if you speak their l1 in my case for instance i'm in turkey I don't speak Turkish, I should, but I don't. Um, and sometimes my students speak in Turkish and they, they ask me like, teacher, can I speak in Turkish? And they, they help each other, right? So it's a great opportunity for you to step back and, and, and watch them um, collaborate. So they collaborate and then you see, oh, you see one, one of the students say, oh, I got it, right? So um, I think it's, it's great because uh, it can really, um, uh, have this this bond you can help your students bond and there's always one student who can report it back to you what they said so uh, i don't see any problem at all using l1 it's uh, you know in some specific moments yes brilliant thanks um uh, and another question what more can be added in a video lesson plan for students with poor listening, speaking, reading and writing skills? What more? Mm, I, I don't know if... Uh, can so you be I think, more specific? Um, uh, this is from Ravina Rayan. Um, mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think what they're asking is when students have got really weak skills right. and... Um, uh, how can you add extra scaffolding into the right. video lesson plans for those students? Right, okay, I got it. I think uh, you can use the tape script um, for, the, for students if they really struggle. Uh, you have the option of uh, printing or not printing in this case, but copying the, the, the tape script and give to your students or perhaps you can um, use the tape script and just delete some of the words uh, so you don't give away too much. Uh, but also you can use subtitles to, to scaffold your students. And um, another way of, of helping them is when you do pair work, you can you make sure that you, you, you pair your student with um, a stronger student or someone who is really helpful, who has patience that can uh, help you with, with that student. I think that's, uh, that's a way to help them. And also use some flip lessons. So I don't want to talk too much because that's uh, uh, Sophia and Russell's um, webinar, but uh, by, by doing some, uh, by asking your students to do uh, some previous work before they 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 come to class. It can really um, give them more time to to absorb and and to um, yeah to learn what you uh, ex what you are expecting from that lesson. Great, thanks very good. much, Cecilia. Um, uh, there are lots more questions, but I think we've run out of time for them yeah. really. 
I just want to remind everyone about the 50% discount on Sensations English Teachers Edition um, for the month of May to celebrate these webinars which we're having. Um, and um, uh, with that comes the uh, special three week CPD program that starts on Monday, the 31st of May. Um, and you can get that offer. I've popped the link in the chat, but it's also on the screen there, sensationsenglish.com forward slash subscribe to teacher and just in case you um, couldn't remember what was um, what's, what Sensations English has, there's hundreds of videos all graded at five levels and these all come with ready-made learning activities. Some of the questions have been asking about an LMS and all of this can be sent to your students through their logins that they get when you subscribe. So it's all linked together and it really helps with monitoring live in remote classrooms and also reviewing what students have done um, mm -hmm. after they've finished it. So every piece of work that they do, every activity they do is the data for that, the information is stored so that then you've got formative feedback records or formative assessment records of everything that students have done so then you can see where their skills are where their needs are and um, it adds to your own monitoring observations and um, augments them and you get logins for all your students and you get the lesson plans which we and teacher guides to help you to to get started and um, the teacher grade book as i said already um, so, um, uh, Cecilia, thank you ever so much for thank being you so here. Much. And, um, and you've mentioned pleasure. Sophia and Russell, and they are coming up next week and yeah. the week after. Um, mm -hmm. This is kind of to complete the suite of webinars in the series so that everyone gets perspectives on not just synchronous or mm -hmm. live classes, but also how to use all of this digital technology and um, digital resources effectively asynchronously, whether it's flipping your classroom, doing a blended work learning approach or working remotely as so many of us have been doing over the last year and a half Absolutely. now. Um, so everybody, really, thank you very much for coming today. Um, uh, your, um, as someone said, will our question be answered in an email? I'm happy to stay behind and answer any questions now if you'd like, but I will answer any questions in an email to you as well. Um, You'll and get. You can pass um, them on to me as well. If absolutely, you want, yes. Okay? I will pass no them on problem. to Cecilia as well, and we'll get back to you. And um, so, if you have any other questions, just email teaching at sensationsenglish.com, and I'll pop that into the chat as well so that you've got that. Cecilia, thank you ever so thank much you for so much, coming Adam. to us today from sunny Turkey. Thank and you, everyone. <laughs> we've been broadcasting from a um, uh, kind of overcast. England um, uh -huh. but it's great to see people here from all over the world over so the thank world. you Amazing. thank um, you everyone have a wonderful day thanks Adam again you're welcome thank you me. and um, uh, thank you for inspiring everyone today great we'll see you all later bye-bye sure. see you later everyone bye-bye